two sisters, Catherine Mary Lyon, 10, and Sheila Mary Lyon, 12, went missing on March the 25th, 1975, while visiting a mall in Wheaton, Maryland. Their disappearance has plagued their town for many years and has remained a mystery. John and Mary Lyon had Catherine and Sheila in Kensington, Maryland. They also have an older brother named Jay, who went on to work as a homicide investigator. John Lyon, their father, was well known for being a radio host on WMAL Radio. They grew up in a calm, middle-class area where parents were less concerned about stranger danger and allowed their children to play outside. According to the Montgomery County Gazette, things were easier when everyone looked out for one another's children. Catherine was in the seventh grade, while Sheila was in the fifth. Both Catherine and Sheila were honor roll students. It was an ordinary day when Catherine and Sheila decided to walk to the neighboring Wheaton Plaza Mall. On the first day of their Easter break from school, they had intended to visit the Easter displays that afternoon and eat at the Orange Bowl Pizza Place, about half a mile from their home. They agreed to return by 4 p.m. and left around 11 a.m. When the Lyon sisters failed to come home that afternoon, their parents called the police at 7 p.m. Authorities combed through weeds and trees to begin a thorough search. Police dispatched scuba divers to explore every abandoned property for miles, including ponds and storm sewers. Neighbors lent a helping hand to the Lyons during their desperate search. The extensive hunt for the Lion Sisters lasted for months and attracted media interest and hundreds of leads. However, as tips decreased and the Lions began to experience the ambiguity roller coaster, their hope turned into desperation. Witnesses informed the police that the sisters were at the mall at 1 p.m. A young child who knew Catherine and Sheila reported to the police that he saw them outside the Orange Bowl. They were chatting with an unnamed man who appeared to be in his 60s, and he wore a brown suit. He described a man walking about with a tape recorder inside a brown suitcase, with youngsters around talking into the microphone. A Manassas, Virginia resident claimed to have seen the two girls bound and gagged in the back of a 1968 Ford station wagon around two weeks after they vanished. This lead was eventually classified as questionable by the police. The incident sparked a media frenzy and led to calls from extortionists, psychics, and people looking for publicity. In the weeks that followed, individuals called for ransom in exchange for the girls, repeatedly calling the Lions home. One person gave the Lions the order to leave $10,000 in an Annapolis courtroom restroom. Police gave the Lions one ransom demand, leaving just 101 in the bag to qualify as a federal crime. The cash was never collected. A week after the kidnapping, 18-year-old Lloyd Welch visited the Wheaton Plaza Outlet Mall. He approached a security guard and revealed he had been present when the girls disappeared from the mall. According to Lloyd, the man had a tape recorder. The young stranger's background was not well known. Welch was a carnival worker who wandered from town to town and was a drifter. Welch failed the police lie detector test. However, despite failing, he was immediately eliminated as a suspect and viewed as an untrustworthy witness. A young girl who was a friend of the Lyons sisters provided another solid lead. The girl's identity has remained a secret to this day out of concern for reprisals. 
The man was described by the girl as being white in his late teens or early twenties, wearing shabby clothing with acne scars on his left cheek. According to the unnamed girl, the man stared at her so intensely that she felt forced to approach him and say something. Welch's mugshot and the police sketch resembled each other quite a bit. Police discovered Welch had a lengthy criminal history in 2014 while working to solve the case, including an arrest in 1977 in Montgomery County for entering into a home eight blocks from Wheaton Plaza and taking $580 in jewelry. Henry Parker was a relative of Floyd Welch. According to Life Daily, in December 2014, he told authorities that in December 1975, he had visited his cousin at a property in Virginia and assisted him in removing two duffel bags. The bags, according to Parker, smelled of death and had bloodstains all over them. They burned the bags in an isolated mountainous region of Bedford County, Virginia. Police declared Welch a person of interest in the Lion Sisters' disappearance investigation again in February 2014. Welch had numerous offenses, including assault in three states, between 1973 and 1977, he was also serving time for abuse of children. Welch was charged by the police with kidnapping and killing of Catherine and Sheila Lyon. Welch allegedly abducted the two girls from the mall and then took them to his childhood home and assaulted them. He later took them hundreds of miles to his uncle's home in Virginia. He then killed the children and set their bodies on fire. Ten women have come forward and prepared to give testimony about how Welch also abducted them, but the judge would be the only one to hear their testimonies. Police were told by one of the women, who is now in her 60s, that Welch had approached her outside of a record shop. He pretended to be a police officer and informed her that she needed to talk to him about her little brother stealing a radio. Welch fled after the woman made a call to her brother. While Welch was serving time for other cases, he went to trial for the murders of Catherine and Sheila Lyon in July 2015. He finally pleaded guilty to the charges after the case had been ongoing for two years. The family may finally rest easy knowing that the murderer of their daughter has been brought to justice after all these years. Police suspect that the sisters were held against their will, assaulted, murdered, possibly dismembered, and burned. However, the details of the case are still somewhat murky. Welch's conviction was an exceptional achievement by police and prosecutors, according to many who followed the case. I think what they did was unprecedented, said Robert Lowry, an executive at the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children who worked the case. The Lyon family has always maintained a low profile. On February the 11th, 2014, they made just one statement. The declaration said, March the 25th will mark 39 years since Catherine and Sheila were taken from our family. Throughout these years, our hopes for a resolution of this mystery has been sustained by the support and efforts of countless members of law enforcement, the news media, and the community. The fact that so many people still care about this case means a great deal to us. Due to his advanced age and the fact that he is already serving a 10-year term in Delaware for a separate offense, Lloyd was given a sentence of 48 years. He will die in prison. When the trial was completed, John Lyon thanked the judges. It had been a difficult three years for him, his wife, and his two sons. 
However, he expressed his gratitude for the investigators working on the case, saying that they had treated his girls as their own for the past three years, and for that he would always be grateful. The relationships of the Lyon family were drastically altered by Catherine and Sheila's absence. John started assisting other families in dealing with trauma and loss as a victim's advocate in Montgomery County. According to a 1998 Washington Post article, on the 23rd anniversary of the girl's disappearance, Lion, his wife Mary, their two grown sons, and five grandchildren planted a weeping cherry tree and small flower garden in a local cemetery. Nearby, they placed a stone marker etched with Sheila's and Catherine's names, their birthdays, and the day they vanished. They visit once a week. It is unbelievable that people can disappear off the face of the earth without a trace. When they find dinosaur bones and identify them, John Lyon said, but maybe it's God's plan or something. If it's something you could understand, then it would be easier to tell you how we get through it. The state of Maryland was shocked by Welch's conviction. An afternoon for the Lyons descended decades ago into the worst nightmare imaginable. There is now tranquility thanks to the diligent detectives who combed every possible lead to solve the case. What are your thoughts?